I want to know when something's changed because I have a particular need. One of the biggest challenges with some of the new technologies is the fact that as the producer of the data, I can decide when I'm going to make information available. But as the consumer of the data, you want to have the exact same flexibility as to when you're going to get it. So there's some folks who want to get it. I want to know everything. So we have a document library that is about this particular topic, and you care deeply about that topic. So anytime anybody adds or changes anything on that topic, you want to know about it. So you can go in and say, hey, set up alerts. Send me an email anytime anybody changes in this document library. You care, not as much as he does. No. But you want to see a summary. So every day, you're going to get a summary email. Today, here are the changes that happened to this document, to this document library. Kevin wants to pretend like he cares. So every week, he'll get a summary email about over the week, here's what cha changed. Okay? But there's one document in particular Kevin cares about. That's cool. He can also say for this document, though, anytime this changes, I want to know about it. Out of the box. Okay? Any questions on that? And this is in addition to, we can also save versions. So every time someone updates, pushes the document up there, it's, it creates a new version, and we can make it so that there's a create a field that essentially has why, and they can't save the document up to the site unless they provide an explanation as to why they updated it. So what you're showing us now, the services or the server? Services. Everything I'm talking about right now is services. And it's, it's kind of interesting because we've been involved with more than one client We've rarely been asked to set up a SharePoint site from scratch. It's almost always a recovery job. <laughs> okay? And the recovery job is one of two kinds. One is where somebody has gone in and literally created a whole bunch of sites without regard to the community concept. And so what ends up happening, you have all these sites, which I refer to them as just you know, the rotating, the spinning logo. There may be something cool about them, but nobody's using them. Okay? That's one of them. The other is where they went ahead and they bought SharePoint Server, where as when you take an actual look at what they're trying to do or what they want to do from a business standpoint, services would have been fine. This is a business tool. Okay? And there are some organizations who look at it from two, perspectives, two different perspectives. The first perspective is, I want to introduce something so we can do cool things with it. Okay? And then there's organizations who will say, we want to implement this thing because there's specifically something we need to do, and this tool will do it. And it's important to recognize the difference between the two. Because in the first case, you're really talking about, and I hate to put it this way, but you're almost talking about a cultural implementation. Because you're really trying to say, hey, let's start using this. Instead of, I'll send you this document, and then you send me the changes, and I'll make, make sure we got him copied on it, or else it'll be whatever. And, you know, it either drops, drops between the cracks, or we lose track of it, or whatever. Um, as well as, there are times, you know, it's, it's like I was talking with these guys earlier this morning, not on a SharePoint issue. But we have a ticketing system. Okay, so whenever clients call or email or we know something, we put in a ticket and we assign it and all that. And now that we have more people, I'm trying to remember not to, because I literally would like send Steve a ticket and then walk over and say, let me explain it to you, Steve. Here's what, <laughs> you know, like there's a part of me that still wants to be Amish about having this discussion about what I just sent you. You know, I've got to learn to get away from that. Yes. Absolutely, good question. So you can put any, you can put documents in there. Absolutely. Here's the here's the trade-off. Okay. One of the things you can also do is you can search. You put in any word, and it will search all the documents, either in this document library or the entire site, and it'll come back and show you what 
you know, which documents contain that. Um, by default, it includes office documents and it includes PDF documents. Okay? Uh, there are some companies who have filters like AutoCAD and all that kind of thing, so you can, you can search for them as well. But you have to get those filters and upload them. A lot of them are free, some of them are not. But you can put any document you want up there. Good, good question. And actually, one of the things that you can do with 2010 is 2010 is now starting to include multimedia. So you can actually start putting multimedia files up there as well. And what you can do for the multimedia files is, depending upon the type, you know how some multimedia files you can actually put tag words or descriptions in. So you've got that. But as well, you can also add metadata. Okay? So, cool. Good question. taking the task objects and the task objects is this needs to be done it needs to be done by such and such and it needs to be done by such and such a time okay and and I'm using this as an example you can actually do it with documents as well and essentially what you can do is to start off with the most common is the three stage the three stage is essentially um, it has not been approved it's awaiting approval it's been approved and so you can create the workflow will essentially alert people when they are supposed to do something and what they are supposed to do and when they are supposed to do it by. As well as someone from the taking a step back, what hasn't been done yet that really should have been done. Okay? Um, so here you've got tasks. And, and this is this is the out-of-the-box task. It's a little more convoluted or complicated than this. Well, it can be, you know. So you can actually have predecessor tasks that would already be in the list. We haven't created any yet. So that this has to be, or these have to be done before this one can be done. And we're going to assign it to somebody who's on the network. And here's where we're going to put some descriptions. And here's the date that it starts. So you can create those tasks and create the linkage between them. Now, would I call this a true project management system? No, I would not, because you really, you don't have uh, things like, you know, the resource layering, uh, you don't have Gantt, PERT, anything along those lines, which in some cases people are going to say, well, that's, that actually is too restrictive anyway. Uh, what you can do, however, is there is a product, it's not cheap, uh, but there's actually project server, uh, from Microsoft, not to be confused with Microsoft Project, the project server actually uses SharePoint to do all those things, in which case somebody can actually, an end user, can actually uh, go to a site, here's all the tasks I've been assigned, and when they're supposed to be done. So in one view, they can literally go, hey, here's the work I'm supposed to be doing right now. Okay. Whereas a project manager, here are all the projects, here's the critical paths, Here's where something is, you know, where I've, I've got resources that are overloaded, resources that are underloaded, so on and so forth. So to a certain degree, and I hate Microsoft Project, and I haven't seen anything better. Uh, because, I mean, Gantt, and, and I'm going to get on my soapbox for a second. Gantt and PERT, PERT charts, uh, anybody know when they were invented? Or why? What's that? 61. Uh, Right around the entry point of the United States in World War One, okay, and were created specifically so we could make more ammunition. That's what, the, yeah, that would that whole thing, and, and not 
good, bad, or indifferent as far as the ammunition standpoint, but it was a fairly straightforward manufacturing process. Okay, now our projects are anything but. And yet the same mechanism has not changed uh, sufficiently, Mike. And I've had this conversation with some of the authors of Microsoft Project and others, and they really go, yeah, you're right, go away. <laughs> Just go away. So, is that kind of... Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So we've got an organization that essentially wants to have, so, and, and if you think about it as a, as a, you know, you've got the vertical and the horizontal tiers as far as how you're de developing and putting this stuff together. On the one side of the fence, you've got your, your customers, and on the other side of the fence, you've got your projects, and on the other side of the fence, you've got your resources, okay? Every one of those perspectives is very different from the other in terms of how they want to see things, but, there's, they want to see the same thing. It's just in a different way. So what you can do is you can create a document library, and we'll get to external connectivity in a second because this is very important for SharePoint services. But you can create a document library that in, in that document you have, and, and, and it's kind of based on who's more critical, if you will, or who do you want the least learning curve, which usually is the customer. Um, so you have a document library for each customer. And then you can also have a document library for, uh, for your resources if you wanted to as well. Now, you can use the view or the index to go searching for specific projects. And you can then put the, and you can also have the tasks going where the tasks are being assigned appropriately. So there's a kind of different perspective for each one of those roles, if you will. Okay? Now, I want to be real clear here. SharePoint is not a document management system. Anyone who says it is, it is a cheap document management system at best. Okay? And one of the biggest strengths you'll get from SharePoint, and we're talking the services here, is, pardon my French, surrendering to the software. You take a look at how it presents it to you, and you go with that. You make some changes. Now,